Hey everybody, welcome to Ezekiel 9. I had to wait a little bit before I could film this one because the sun was too bright and I couldn't see. Taking my sunglasses off. Alright, so um, this one's titled The Wicked Are Slain and we're going to continue on that process we've been working through on the tribulation. God is pronouncing judgment against Israel. He's like, you guys are doing this, you're doing that, I'm done. Ezekiel's having to unload on them. And the Lord's going through a very elaborate process of pointing out to them what's happening so that they're aware, so nobody's without excuse, so they, they can see and understand what's going on. So that they will know why it's happening to them. And if, amazingly enough, they still don't, even to this day, they still don't realize. Maybe because they don't want to. But something interesting the Lord did in the last chapter was he took Ezekiel and showed him something. Showed him a process, a very interesting thing that was going on behind closed doors. Things that were happening with the very priests that were supposed to be serving God. But I guess it turned out they weren't. Then he called out in my hearing with a loud voice. This is a continuation of the last chapter. Saying, let those who have charge over the city draw near, each with a deadly weapon in his hand. And suddenly, six men came from the direction of the upper gate, which faces north, each with his battle axe in his hand. One man among them was clothed with linen and had a rider's inkhorn at his side. They went in and stood beside the bronze altar. Who is that? Clothed, clothed with linen? With an inkhorn? Who is that? Verse 3, Now the glory of the God of Israel had gone up from the cherub, where it had been, to the threshold of the temple. And he called to the man clothed with linen, who had the writer's inkhorn at his side. And the Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and cry over all the abominations that are done within it. Where did we read that very same description? I believe it was, I forget the name of the book, but I believe it was, no, it wasn't Zerubbabel when they were with him. I can't remember now, but there's another verse in another book where it talks about that very same thing, the men who sigh and cry. I can't remember where it is, but I remember reading it. We've covered it. So, are those people going to let some guy walk in there and just put a mark on their forehead with a pen? No. It's spiritual. It's Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ right there. To the others, he said, My hearing, go after him through the city and kill. Do not let your eyes spare, nor have any pity. When you're going in behind him, you're going to kill everybody who doesn't have that mark. The man in linen is Jesus Christ. Everywhere the man in linen appears, it's always, you know, angelic in nature. It's always someone who's serving God. God is always telling, hey, go do this. I want you to do that. He's always giving these amazing commands and prophecies. It's Jesus Christ. To the others, the men with the axes, because you just read about them when they called to come out of the gate. That was uh, up there in verse 2. Six men came from the direction of the upper gate, which faces north, each with his battle axe in his hand. One man among them was clothed, was clothed with linen and had a writer's inkhorn. He wrote this book. He's the writer of this. This is Jesus Christ. I, think, I don't think they caught it because they should have ca capitalized in verse 2 where it says one man among them. They should have capitalized man. This is Jesus. To the others he said in my hearing, go after him through the city and kill. Do not let your eyes spare nor have any pity. Utterly slay old and young men, maidens and little children and women, but do not come near anyone on whom is the mark and begin at my sanctuary. So they began with the elders who were before the temple. Then he said to them, defile the temple and fill the courts with the slain. Go out. And they went out and killed in the city. So it was that while they were killing them, I was left alone, and I fell on my face and cried out and said, Ah, Lord God, will you destroy all the remnant of Israel in pouring out your fury on Jerusalem? He, it's not really happening. I think he's having a vision. 
And we know he is because we go back in the previous chapter. Then he said to me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great, and the land is full of bloodshed, and the city full of perversity. For they say the Lord has forsaken the land, and the Lord does not see. And as for me also, my eye will neither spare, nor will I have pity, but I will recompense their deeds on their own head. Verse 11, Just then the man clothed with linen, who had the inkhorn at his side, reported back and said, I have done as you commanded me. The only person ever to wear linen, ever described in the Bible, was Jesus. Jesus is the one in the tribulation who comes and enacts the judgment. Jesus is the great man sitting on the, you know, he's sitting on a, a stool or whatever over the earth and thrust in your sickle and reap. It's Jesus reaping because he's in linen. Daniel saw him standing by the Ulal River, a man clothed in linen with his hands raised up. So that's Jesus Christ right there. I think m many people may have missed that. But that's him. I don't know. This vision is such an elaborate vision. And this vision is going to happen. This is a tribulation. The, the remnant will be spared. They're going to suffer a lot because of what's going on. But they're going to be spared. They're going to be saved. Now see, he brought him all around to these places. And this very elaborate vision here in the previous chapter. So this vision continues in this chapter. And he shows him something incredible. I don't know if Ezekiel realized that that's who that was that was standing there with that inkhorn, the one who's the writer of this book, who put himself in writing, who put God in writing, who put the Holy Spirit in writing. Ezekiel, I don't think, recognized him. At this point, he didn't. Next chapter is going to be the glory departs from the temple, Ezekiel 10. It's going to be the continuation of the chapter we just read. The man in linen is still there. We're learning something here. We're seeing something incredible here. There's more, much more to this than meets the eye. I'm, I've been without sleep, so I'm having a hard time. Um, my head is a little cloudy, but it's pretty easy to see what's going on here. God is passing judgment. Mark out those who are of my remnant. The rest die. Judgment. It's judgment. When he took them out in the Exodus, the same thing happened. Some of these are, are on my side. The rest of them are going to die, and they did. How amazing that all the way back then, Jesus was there and he still had the zeal for God's house. Even then, before he ever came as a man, before he ever appeared, here he is in that temple with Ezekiel. And he, when he becomes born a man, I forget how, how far after this it was. He goes back to that same temple that he was at in a, as a spiritual being. How amazing. How amazing. See, this whole book is about Jesus Christ. This whole book describes him, declares him, projects him. That's why I say this is the written representation of the Lord. Let us never forget what this is all about and who this is all about. Let us never forget what we're doing here. Let us never forget, like what we said this morning, it's all about the Lord. If, if he's not first, what good is any of this? He must be first, because he is the first and the last.
And Ezekiel's getting a good, healthy dose of reality as to what's about to happen. Luckily for him, it wasn't in his lifetime. It's for a future generation. We're going to find out in the previous in our next chapters just how elaborate this gets. Obviously, the man in linen is still there, so this still this continues for a while. Yeah, the Lord's really going to let it loose. He's really giving it to him. So we're gonna we're gonna see some more. This is gonna be amazing. I'm so glad we went into, went into this book. I don't know what one we're going in after this, but this one might give us enough to leave us scratching our heads and leave us glorifying God. All right, guys, that was Ezekiel nine. I'm sorry, my eyes are starting to give me grief, so I need to go and put a hot compress on them. That was Ezekiel 9. Thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next one.